Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline and as you can tell we are in my office today. I figured I'd give you a little bit of a different backdrop instead of always being in the YouTube studio which is in truth my dining room and I have turned it into my studio. A lot of times I do my hauls whether they be hard goods or clothing hauls or sometimes when I just want to talk to you guys and share some things. I wind up standing in front of the big window, which is really nice, but I figured I'd mix it up a little bit and do a sitting down haul. I could use the sitting down part. So today is Monday and my shipping is done. Fairly good sales weekend and I am off and listing already. This morning I think I got about 10 items on. I will make this video and then probably head out to do some shopping. All right, so today is a clothing haul, which you guys know me, I've been doing a lot more hard goods and different types of items, hauls, if that makes sense, rather than just clothing. But today I'm going to talk a little bit about what clothing I've been picking up. All right, so let's get on with the clothing haul. I'm just going to talk a little bit about why I picked these items up. They might be items that you're passing by. They might be items that aren't really on some bolo list. That's what I always say. Now I do pick up a lot of the bolo brands. It's not like I ignore those brands, but you'll see what I mean as we go along. So the first item is a type of item that I always pick up, always. These are called fisherman sweaters, and this is what this one looks like. Very heavy, chunky, cable knit, Nordic, um, very warm sweaters. You could almost wear these sweaters as coats. This one is Paul James. It is a men's large, so I will show you that tag. This one's all washed and I block dry it. So that means that I either wash it on delicate cycle or hand wash. This one was delicate cycle in the machine because it's so heavy. And then block drying means to dry flat and put it into shape with your hands so that it comes out really nice. And this one is just gorgeous. I do look for sweaters in the brand Innisfraft. I think it's I-N-N-I-S, might be just I-N-I-S craft. A lot of times these sweaters are made in Ireland, England, Scotland those are the ones you really want now I'm sure there are vintage sweaters you know from woolen mills in the United States but the majority of the sweaters I find the fisherman sweaters are from Europe all right so I paid $5.25 for this I believe that's what a sweater is I bought this right before the prices went up again I got this at a goodwill and just beautiful The one thing you want to be really careful when you're picking up sweaters is that the sweater has not shrunk. A lot of times if somebody washes a wool sweater in a warm or hot water, the shrinking will make the whole thing like tighten up. So you can feel it sometimes if it's been over dried or overheated in some way, hot water or a dryer, that it is no good. Do not pick up sweaters and think you're going to stretch them back into shape. A buyer can almost always tell that an item has been shrunk. These sweaters are 100% well this one is made in England, pure wool, 100%. I'm not sure what kind of wool it is, but you can feel the minute you touch it that it's a wool sweater. The next item up is a pair of slippers that I just couldn't walk away from. These are a little pair of wool slippers. Look at the pom-pom. How adorably cute is that? And there are two reasons that I picked up these slippers. One is that they're adorable, they're so boho, and the other is I believe these are 100% wool. So years ago, I learned about Smartwool. Smartwool is a company that made uh, wool socks and wool slippers 100%, and people loved that brand. I don't know that Smartwool, the company, is still making 100% wool, but I know people love a really good wool slipper, like a wool sweater. So these are actually made in Greece. That is another reason I picked them up. Embroidered woolen slippers produced in Greece. Number 37. I'm hoping 37 is the Greek size. And I'm hoping that I can find a Greek size chart. I don't know that I've ever seen a Greek 
you know, comparative size chart, but I'll give anything a go. If I cannot find the US size, I will absolutely list the Greek size. It might be a UK size or a size, you know, an Italian size. I'm going to have to figure that out, but I will just measure the footbed inside and out. That's if I can get a tape measure inside, but definitely give the measurement of the length of the slipper. I paid $5 for these. I have never sold Greek slippers before but there's always a first. So main reason is because they are 100% wool and super cute. I have no idea what I'm gonna get for them because I've never sold Greek slippers before. So there you go. All right, next up is an item that I just grabbed and put in my cart. It's not a company where I make a lot of money with it, Old Navy. I have to say, whoever is doing the designing for Old Navy, I think they do a great job. You know, there are certain companies that are considered kind of like your just basic, maybe lower end company, but sometimes the designs are quite good. Another company that does this is H&M. So recently I went out with my son. We went to church in the morning and then we um, had dinner at or lunch at the diner and then we went to the mall. Great fun. My son has a very good sense of fashion. You might have seen his picture. I posted it on Instagram and really proud of him. But I love to go shopping with him because he really knows fashion well and he is not in the fashion field at all. He's in construction. Getting back to what I'm talking about. Boy, am I getting off track. <laughs> Keep me focused. Old Navy, I picked up a dress that I think the style is so good. I think I'm going to get a little bit more money for it than I would an average Old Navy dress. So in my opinion, most dresses from Old Navy, probably under $15. I'm thinking I could probably get 20 to 22 for this for the size. So this is a large tall, which is great. And the style, which is a gingham check. So I'm going to, I'm going to wheel back in my chair a little bit. So as you can see, it is a wrap dress, it ties, and it has a real farm feel to it, in my opinion. So I just love this style dress, and it's in great condition. It's a beautiful gold color. It has a lot going for it. I think wrap dresses are as popular as they are because you don't have to worry if you gain two or three pounds or lose two or three pounds. It's so adjustable. You're just putting one over the other, you know, one flap over the other and tying it shut, kind of like a bathrobe. Who doesn't want to wear a dress that feels like you're wearing a bathrobe? Wear the Greek woolen slippers, done. You know, that's not a bad idea. If those slippers fit me, I would try that on. I wouldn't wear it out of the house, but all right. So that's what made me buy the Old Navy dress. Do not go out and pick up every Old Navy dress and say, oh, lavender clothesline, Karen said to pick up Old Navy dresses. No, don't do that. But if you find a dress in an average mall or outlet brand and you feel that style is trendy and you can get it for a couple of dollars, I say give it a try. A lot of times I am not paying attention to brands strictly, strictly brands. I am paying attention to style and condition as much as the brand. All right, let's go on to the next item and see why I picked it up. The next few items all fit into one category and they are vintage women's blazers. Well, the women aren't vintage. <laughs> vintage blazers. Women's vintage blazers. There we go. Oh, it's going to be one of those days I can tell. <laughs> vintage. What did I say? Women's vintage blazers. Oh, okay, here we go. I'm not going to edit any of this. I'm just going to go for it. You guys are just going to see how hard it is to make videos. Some days it's just a thing. So this first jacket, the minute I saw this, I took this. I think this is really good. So this is Giorgio Armani. Giorgio Armani has a lot of different labels. One is called Le Collectione, something like that. It's collection, the collection in Italian. One is Armani Exchange. That is the lower end brand. I think the exchange is sold in department stores and outlets. But anything above that, if it was sold in like Bergdorf Goodman or, you know, those types of stores and it's vintage, I have a tendency to pick these blazers up. And as you can see, the size is Italian. So when a size is not a U.S. size, whether it is a branding vanity size like Chico's One or it's um, a brand that is not based in the United States and the items are made 
you know, whether it's an Asian country or a European country, I always give the US size too. So I just go into Google and I look for the size chart that gives you the conversion. So this is a green blazer and it is a wool silk blend, I believe, for this one. Double breasted, beautiful condition. So one thing I always do with vintage clothing, I take a look at the inner lining, the satin lining, to see if there is any staining or color transfer or just any wonkiness with the underarms, with where the person sits on it, the back of the neck, you wanna make sure that this satin lining is in good condition, that it's very clean looking. I also look at the blazer to see if it's been altered because a lot of times if a woman is a petite and she can't get a petite jacket in that store or wherever she's shopping, she will have it altered and the cuffs and the hem will be shortened. So I always go in and look that the sleeve cuff and the jacket hem hasn't been altered. So you can always tell if it has been turned over or rolled and sewn. You wanna see where the lining was made into the garment and they've given you that margin of just the jacket sleeve cuff. Does all of that make sense? All right, so this is the first one, jackets, blazers, $7.95 I think I'm paying now for them. This one has shoulder pads, it's vintage. I'm not sure of the age on these. These I have three of them here. But I wanted to mention that vintage blazers of certain styles, very sought after. A lot of people that dress vintage, a lot of women who dress vintage in the corporate field, they tend to look for vintage blazers. I have this on already. I listed this this morning. I can't remember what I listed it for. I'll have to insert the photo here of my listing so we can take a look at what I listed it for. The second blazer that I found is this gorgeous blazer. I love the color of this. Very hard to describe colors in eBay. So when I have to describe a color, less is more. Because if you wind up saying you have like, you know, grass green and somebody gets the jacket and they say, this isn't really grass green. This is, you know, whatever. This is evergreen green going to be a thing. So I try to keep it really basic when naming colors. That's the first thing. So this is Escada and it is vintage Escada. So again, a vintage blazer and this is Margaretha Lay. And that's what that tag looks like. Again, I think Escada is Germany. So this is a German 38, which I think translates to an eight. Don't quote me on that. Again, I have to Google a, um, a size chart for the comparison, for the conversion and just a gorgeous jacket. I love the buttons on this jacket. Very beautiful gold tone logo buttons. Sometimes when I find vintage pieces and they have very good buttons, but the item is in bad shape, I will go ahead and purchase the item, clip off the buttons and sell the buttons. Did you guys know you can sell quite a few buttons? So the higher end brands, the buttons sell. Sometimes if the jacket has different um, what do I want to say? Different details. You can sell the details off of that jacket. If it has a branded silk lining and the jacket is no good, you can actually cut that lining out or sell the whole jacket just for the buttons or just for the lining. With the buttons, I would go ahead and clip the buttons off only if the jacket is really not good, but this one is beautiful. So this is half cashmere, half wool, and you can tell it's cashmere beautiful, beautiful feel in the hand. So again, I paid, I believe I paid $7.95. I'm going to have to check my jacket prices. And I'm thinking <laughs> I'm going to have to insert the photo here because I don't remember what I listed it for. So that is that item. Third jacket or blazer, vintage. This is Giorgio Armani again. This is Le Collectione. I do well with this label. I, don't, I it must say the collection but I don't know what makes the collection different than any other label. But it has a size 12, and 12, I don't believe, is a common Italian size, so I believe this size is already a U.S. woman's uh, size, so I think this blazer was made for the American market. I'm not positive about any of that, but when I see a European garment with an American size, a U.S. size, to me, that would mean that it's made either in the United States for the Italian brand or it is made in Italy 
for the US market. This one says made in Italy, so I think it's made for the US market. Correct me if you guys know and I'm wrong about that. Okay, so most of these blazers will have shoulder pads. It's good to let your buyer know that, but buyers familiar with these garments know that most of them are gonna have shoulder pads because they're vintage, and vintage blazers and jackets a lot of times have shoulder pads. So this is like a real um, business type, career type jacket. Beautiful, again, this is wool and just in great condition. Another item that I like to talk about are slips. So I have picked up more slips than I care to remember. I will pick up vintage slips if they are really beautiful lingerie. The vintage ones do really well and they're just made gorgeous. You can tell that the lace is something special. I don't think you need to know a lot about vintage lace. It just has a more beautiful look than something that you're going to pick up from an everyday store like Kmart or Walmart or something like that. So it is good to learn about lace, but I don't think you need to know a lot about lace on slips. So this next slip I showed finding this in Goodwill and this is what it looks like. This one is Profiles. So this is more of like a crinoline in my opinion. Crinolines are made to puff a dress out. They're made to expand the skirt part of a dress or a skirt in itself. And I don't know that this is especially vintage. It could be 80s or 90s. I think it's even after that. But I really liked the style of this. This might be worn for a wedding. It might be for a bride who wants her dress a little bit fuller, but really nice condition. It does have the upper layer being lace and then the bottom layer being a stiff tool. This is like a crinoline. So slips, I believe I paid $2.50 for it. And um, this is a medium. Would have been nicer if it was a little bit bigger, a larger, an extra large, but I'll go ahead and pick it up for $2.50. And I'm thinking, I have not comped this. So with the satin trim, I'm thinking I should be able to get 20 to 25, if not more. If I comp it and it's higher, I will adjust my price accordingly, but I love picking up slips that are just beautiful quality or that are really special. This can also be used for Renaissance Fair or some kind of cosplay. If you didn't know this name, you'd probably pass this type of sweater by because it's a raggy looking sweater. I kind of like this for myself, like when it's a cold wintry day and I'm just home listing. I love wearing like a really toasty, cozy sweater when I'm at my desk for long hours. It just makes me feel comfortable and um, yeah, and enjoy the time at the desk a little bit more. But this is Rag and Bone. I like the name Rag and Bone. This was sold at Neiman Marcus and it is a size large, which is great. Rag and Bone is a good solid brand. The jeans do well for me. I don't find them that often. And like I said, I've stopped picking up women's jeans. If I found rag and bone jeans, I would probably pick them up if they were in great condition. Just a tweed. It's got like a texture to it. It's a waffle, a waffle knit sweater and um, a shawl collar. Some people will call cardigan sweaters that have a big shawl um, collar to it. They'll call it grandpa or grandma sweaters. Um, there are different names for them but I don't expect I will have this long. I haven't even um, done anything to it yet. So it's not listed, it's not washed, it's not anything. Tags are still on it, you know, the barbs. When you see my barbs are still on it, that means I haven't done anything with it yet. And this will probably be listed this week. I'm not sure what Rag & Bone is bringing. It used to bring more, one of those brands, a lot more than it brings now because people caught on to the name from YouTubers sharing it. Ah. <laughs> I love sharing with you guys. So just know, as a side note, I share like 95% of what I'm doing. There are certain things that I don't share. If something is really sensitive and it's gonna destroy me making money on it. So say I found, I don't know, a store with a closeout of a certain thing. Like the time that I found all of those phones at Turkey Hill. So I got a tip from a friend who couldn't do it that Turkey Hill was clearancing out their uh, track phones, their mobile phones, whatever we wanna call them. And I went to a gajillion Turkey Hill gas stations and bought them all out. They were originally like, 35 or 45 and they were on clearance for $5. So I went to every single store. 
I wouldn't share that because if everybody ran to the Turkey Hill, that's it, it's done. But everything else, if it's good brands, if it's styles that I'm finding will bring money, if it's hard goods that I think are really wonderful, I will always share it with you guys. That's my heart. I think it's good to encourage one another, but just know I don't share 100% of what I find. Today's video will be a little bit shorter. And talking about that, I've been looking at my YouTube analytics a little bit more, always looking to grow my channel. Please hit the like and subscribe button. <laughs> that helps my channel out immensely. You guys have no idea. And it's the only thing I ask from you guys. For me sharing and being on here, sometimes I get a lot of letters saying, what can we do for you? And you can hit the like and subscribe button. That helps a YouTuber really, really a lot. So um, I lost track of what I was saying. Saying. What was I saying? YouTube analytics. My analytics are showing that you guys really watch with me a long time. I appreciate that because I have heard it said that a lot of times a YouTuber will only be able to capture an audience um, attention for like five to seven minutes. And you guys are with me 20 minutes sometimes, which is just amazing. But getting back to where I started, today's video is going to be shorter if I stop talking. All right. I picked this cape up. So this print is called Houndstooth. This is a classic Houndstooth. That is what it looks like. Now this brand is not a great brand for me, but when I saw this, I did go back and forth for like two minutes and I said, you know what, this is too good, I'm getting this. So this is, I'm gonna show it to you. This is Anne Klein, and that's her lion logo. I'm sure we're all familiar with that. But I thought this was really classic, really good, size extra large, which is a great size. It has nice buttons. It's like a gold tone lion button. I wonder if the camera will, will focus on that. So I'm going to wheel my chair back as far as I can. Let me straighten this out so we can look at this properly. And I just loved this piece. I thought it was great. New with tags, originally sold for $149. So it is a cape in a hound's tooth pattern. Okay, so that I got charged a sweater price and sweater prices are right under $6 right now. I should be able to get 60 for that, even though it's just Anne Klein. So, um, so I said yes to it and put it in my cart. It's in great shape. It's new with tags. Okay, guys, so that is the video for today. Thanks for hanging out with me. Once again, I'm nagging. Hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours.